guys, today I'm going to do 11 Hip Hop's New York Season 6, Episode 9. Excuse the hair rag, but it's late. Um, Y'all going to probably get this hair rag until I get my hair done this weekend, I'm just saying. Um, But this is a ratchet show, so I might as well come at you the way I feel comfortable. Um, we gonna not going to go step by step on this show. We just going to talk about some things that happened tonight because the episode didn't give us no excitement. Let's start with Mandisi because he was the most irrelevant. Um, not like that, but his storyline wasn't long. So he at the studio with Cameron and all of a sudden he said he's getting things in order for his family because he um getting ready to go in and why it's postponed, he trying to get everything in order. So he's about to come out with a sneaker line. And I think he wants Cameron to rock his stuff, post it or whatever. But he didn't mention that right now. But he started talking about, um, it was something else they started talking about. I don't know. But Cameron was playing, oh, they were talking about music or whatever. And Cameron was um, playing, I guess, a beat. And Mandy C was over there mumbling. And then Cameron was like, well, oh, what are you doing? And he was like, well, I got 16 bars when I was in jail. I was thinking and writing. And whoop, whoop. He was like, you know, everybody got 16 bars, whatever. Just a, just a boring setup because I was like, why is y'all, this is not believable, but okay. So all of a sudden he like, oh, get in the booth. I'm like, oh, so you don't just want him to spit it right there. Why he got to get in the booth? Like. That's why I've said this didn't look believable, but okay. We got to give Mandy C some airtime because we ain't seen him in a long time. All right. Um, but he get in the booth and he spit. And I wasn't saying it was good. I'm not going to say it was bad because he was spitting about, you know, I guess what he been going through and what he been through. So, okay, I give him that, but stick to your day job. That's all I'm saying. At least he know that that wasn't his forte, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I like to sing, but bitch, I'm not going to get out there and sing Beyonce. No, not going to happen. And I mean, just saying. So, at least he know his lane. Um, Then we have, talk about, because it was only like really two more storylines after that. So, we'll talk about Rich and Cisco. It started off with them. And the whole thing with Mariah Lynn. And Rich is just baffled. Because Rich is like, my nigga, I tried to look out for you. And call you. So, you know what I'm saying? We can confront this girl. And you come back. You come at me on some petty ass. Get back. Like, this. Cisco is so petty. He's so fucking petty. He over there talking about, I feel disrespected. All over Diamond Strawberry. Like, my nigga, you didn't care about this girl. You didn't let her stay with you. You didn't. You lied to her about you having so many kids. You lied to her about your baby mama. All this. And you act like you were sprung on her. You act like y'all was such in a relationship that everything was peaches and creams. And he just stole the love of your life from up under you. My nigga, like you was dogging this girl out. And then you get mad because the next nigga smashed. I understand it's supposed to be your homeboy, but y'all are the creep squad. So you know of the creep squad, niggas do creepy stuff. Why do you feel like you off limits because it's both because it's a nigga in your squad? Nigga, it's called the creep squad. You're rich is known for fucking with different females. So really? And then you're gonna say, oh, it was on some get back. That's just petty and childish and dumb. Just dumb. Sis, I just couldn't understand him. Then he over there talking about, um, Rich is over there like, I don't give a fuck about Mariah. I don't give a fuck about Diamond. Like, I care about you, my nigga. Like, we fucking like, why? Are... That's how I was looking at him, looking at him for caring so hard, but okay. Um, but then he was like, I'm gonna teach you a lesson. I'm gonna teach you a lesson. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna fuck old girl in LA. I'm gonna fuck Monice. And I'm like, really? Really, my dude? You going to go after a girl because this nigga butt hurt you so fucking bad? Like, I don't get this shit. So, he pushes Rich. And before Rich can even... Even though Rich said he wasn't going to do nothing because that's supposed to be his homeboy. He just was, like I said, he was baffled. I was just like, really, Cisco? Really? You going to... But I'm sorry. Homeboy would have went out the window. He would have got stole on. But, hell, 
security was right there, so he couldn't do too much. Then he go outside and talk to Mariah Lynn and still on some payback rich type shit. And she felt set up and she talking about she done. And he still talking about he going to handle rich and then he going to handle her still on some petty bullshit. She was like, you don't have to handle me. Like, my nigga, I'm gone. I'm done. Like, you stupid. You, you an idiot. Like, he done. So then, um, Rich meets up with, what's his name? Dumbass, the other creep squad. Peter. He meets up with Peter. Peter tells him about getting both women pregnant. He like, my nigga, every time I'm about to tell you some shit, you baffle me with some other shit. And he was like, man, every time you take one step forward, you take two steps back. And... Peter's still Peter, dumb, don't know what to do. He ain't talked to neither one of the women that he got pregnant. They ain't trying to probably figure out how they doing. Well, they probably ain't answering the phone. But I'm like, you brought that on yourself. You're an idiot. So then Rich tells him about the whole thing with Cisco and how the drama unfolded. So Peter feels like they need to work that out because they all a part of this creep squad and they can't be letting bitches come between them and all that yada 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 bullshit. Um... Then they meet up at the end, and then it kind of goes off. So that was that with them. Um, Yarma and her sister meet up. Let me go home and get comfortable. Yarma, her sister meets up, and her sister, like, you know, she telling her sister how her and self is going good and all this kind of stuff. Her sister, like, from what Instagram shows and what um, this video say, it's a whole different situation. So she shows her a picture of the girl and um self and she the I can say that the picture didn't look like it was nothing either because I mean I take a picture with a lot of different people in the industry or whatever, little local rappers and stuff like that. So, you know, pictures like whatever. But and then that picture looked like he was leaning over something and then she took the picture from behind. So it didn't look like it was nothing. But the on air stupid ass DJ self, he saw, I told you, he licked the fucking yellow bus with a helmet on. I promise, because I just don't know dudes this dumb. I really don't know dudes this, it, it might be some, but I just don't know none. He is so dumb. He gives the beauty bar a shout out on the radio or whatever. Then his dumb ass thought it was okay to call Rose on air. Knowing you had dealings with this girl, went on a date with this girl, whatever it may be, you thought it was okay. So she over there saying, she calling him my love, and she call him guapo, or whatever the hell that's supposed to mean. I don't know. Maybe y'all gonna leave it in the conference section, but okay. But apparently it was some shit that, you know, you, you love you up on your man, not know, because Yorma kept saying she might just be a fan, and bitch, that wasn't no fan kind of conversation. So... Your sister, like, you know, you need to, you know, you need to go see what's popping. And she was like, well, he's going to be mad. And, okay, I get that because you're not supposed to be confronting a girl. But when this nigga keep on lying, it's a way to talk to the other woman. Not this bull, this. I'm just not with women going to pop off to get answers. Bitch, when you pop off, you get the answers you get because you should have popped off and she would talk to her like a grown-ass woman. So, hey, it is what it is. So, um, Yarma goes and say, okay, I'm going to go and say something to her or whatever. So her and her sister goes to Rose's shop and her and her people there. I don't know who the other girl was, but her and her people was there. And Yarma comes in there on some petty ass bullshit talking about, do you know, she was questioning about the shout out. And then she was like, well, do you know him personally because the way he was talking? And she was like, yeah. She was like, that's my boyfriend. She was like, that's your boyfriend. She was like, yeah. She was like, but for how long? She was like, we've been knowing each other for years, so it's always been something there. So then the sisters start popping off. Okay, that's her sister. You taking off of your sisters. But I'm like, you need to go tell your sister let's go because she about to get some answers she don't want. I'm just saying, like, this is dumb. Even the other girl was like, man, won't y'all go on? Like, we too, we on some grown women in our business working type shit. And you petty bitches on some stupid shit. So, y'all my dumbass. She is so fucking, oh, I was cracking up when, uh, when, what's the girl name? Rose was like, 
if I fuck him, you won't be around. And I was just like, oh. I was like, me, she wasn't scared and she was ready to pop off too. I'm so with them ready. Hey, I'm with a bitch. I ain't gonna punk out. So, um, and, but she did say if she find out that self is with homegirl, then, um, she gonna have problems with him. I was like, no, you're not. No, you all not. Whatever. Stop lying. You gonna cuss him out and still fuck him on the side. Just like Yarma. Um, but Yarma trashes her store. And I was like, this is the dumbest stuff you could have ever did. Now she can sue your dumb ass and it's on camera that you came and trashed her store. Because you didn't like what she was saying to you. Your fight ain't with her. Your fight is with your dude. You went on there on some rah -rah shit. You should have went in on some grown woman shit. That that was so petty. That was so fucking petty. And it was I was laughing when the sister was telling Rose to come around that counter. And she came around that damn counter. And the other girl went around the other counter. But I was like, girl, y'all know security ain't for the ledge. I was like, that's probably, I don't know, might have bring away y'all reason why y'all went around that counter. But I was like, at least I wasn't mad that y'all went around that counter. Bitch, you, you want us to come around the corner? Here we come. I was just hoping that it would have got like some... But I would have wanted to see who would have won. I'm just saying. Um, but yeah, so then after that, they leave. Yarma and her sister go confront Dum Dum Self. And he say that nothing happened. I don't believe it, but okay. Nothing happened, but she still kissed you. She still sat on your lap. It still was on TV. You still was feeling on her. You still said, oh, it's one, um, one time won't hurt. So... Whether you did it or not, you said one time don't hurt. So you think a person going to believe you didn't smash this girl? And she was throwing it at you? You, okay. And then she said, y'all boyfriend and girlfriend? I'm, I mean, you know, I'm just saying. She must have got some dick. I'm just saying. But you know, it is delusional girls. But I believe he said something to her that said, we together. And he made her feel like she was the only one. I don't believe that. He didn't say, not say anything, just let her believe that. That's not what I don't think. But she get mad and say it's over once again. She was talking about her and her sister was going to jump on. Her sister was popping off. And I'm like, y'all wasting y'all fucking time. And I hope that was at a studio that y'all went to that you had to get buzzed in. Because if you had to get tell him to come downstairs from his own house and you've been dating him a year... But you need a new game plan. That's all I'm saying. So the last but not least I want to talk about was Remy, Yandy, and Ra, and Pat, and her whole storyline. So she's so stressed out about this wedding that she stressed me out. I'm so, yeah. Ra gave you the perfect award, the Petty Queen, because... I, like I told y'all, some people should not do reality shows. And I really liked her. But right now, I just look at her like, why are you here? Just like say, Sean Brady say, why are you here, Ike? Because I'm just like, I don't get it. I just, <clears throat> she has some problems with her mom still. You know, they still having difficulties or whatever. So she ended up meeting up with her mama. And it was basically, her mama was in her feelings and she wasn't coming to the wedding because Remy didn't invite her so um she was in her feelings and said she wasn't gonna come I can get that then when they talked about the whole she didn't come to the jail as much as Remy wanted to I'm like baby girl you did it I'm sorry you can't expect people to drop their lives because you they the mama daddy uncle cousin boyfriend I'm sorry it's not like you were in jail because you did not, you were innocent. And then you'd be like, oh, I really want my mom here. You did some fucked up shit. And so people can't just say, okay, I'm going to go to jail all the time. I'm going to put my life on hold because her life is on hold. It just doesn't work that way. I know we all will want our moms there when we go to jail, but life just doesn't happen that way. And I'm quite sure they didn't have that kind of relationship before she went in jail, so I'm just saying. But she ended up inviting her mama to the wedding, whatever. So then, let's talk about her and Pap meeting up. First of all, I hated that blonde hair. Ah, mm. I just didn't think it worked for her. Just saying. Um... 
But when she met up with Pap to, and said she changed the venue, I'm like, really? Uh, when you say your wedding is a month away, you changed your venue? Talking about she wanted a winter wonder thing, man. It didn't go. And I'm like, he gave you a castle. Talking about, oh, well, that's still part of it. You, um, she was like, you proposed to me there. So, okay, cool. But you have a venue set a month away. So, I'm quite sure you will send out some invites. Y'all ain't David to tarot. It don't work like that. Um, and you want to change the venue? And then she said something about a, uh, like, she, like I said, she said something about a, um, a skate rink or something and all that kind of stuff. Her wedding is over, so it really don't, uh, it really doesn't matter. But I just was baffled. Then he was like, cause she was like, oh, cause you love me. And he was like, well, I'm going to lose out on the deposit from the castle. I said, no, love and hip hop, Mona Scott, and I'm going to. Like, um, somebody's going to lose out on this deposit, but it won't be you. Because I'm like this. Besides a trap nigga or something, what'd he do? what he do? I understand he an artist, but is he booking venues in New York like that? Y'all let me know. Is he popping like that? That he is, like, got a popping big venues in New York like that? Like, I'm just saying, is he booking, like, Jay-Z Club or some shit? I'm just saying, for you to just say, I'm going to lose out on my deposit for a castle and then make another venue happen. I ain't even looked at no venue, but you make another venue happen. Well, she probably already got the venue. But under a month, really? Hmm, okay. Then another unprepared thing she did. She ain't got no dress. And she wants to invite Yandy to help her find a dress. A girl, that's not some shit you go with a girl you just met like that to pick, help you pick out a dress. Now, bitch, you can help me go look and try it on, but you're not going to help me make the decision for the dress and we ain't been hanging that long. We, bitch, ain't been, was she at the jail? Did she visit you like the way you think everybody should have visited you? Because I think the person that should have been visiting you got, should have all the damn ideas and stuff, so... With a Yandy, because, I don't know. It just seemed like this all of a sudden ready-made friendship. I just didn't get it. Um, So, I was on Ross's side where she said, like, bitch, she don't know you. But, girl, I was still being a little petty, but we'll get to that. So, her and Yandy go dress shopping. And she didn't like what Yandy was picking because Yandy wanted sparkles. And Yandy, I don't. You gotta watch her. Bitch, you over there talking about our wedding. I'm like, our who? Y'all getting remarried? You and Mandisi gonna have a double wedding with them? That y'all gonna have a hour? Are you paying for it? Hour? I'm just saying. Because I just didn't understand her saying that. But she, um, and then Ra talking about her in the confessionals. And I'm like, say it right there. Why she saying that? I'm just saying. Um, but then she ended up. This petty shit that she did where she met up at the boxing ring at the end. And she talking to Ra. She invited Ra over there. And they talking about the wedding, making up from the wedding. That's when Ra called her a petty queen. And I say, yeah. Because she was like, you know, you ain't called me. And I've been stressed out. And I'm physically sick. And she was like, bitch, I've been leaving you message. You the one ain't been answering your phone. Like, bitch, don't try to put that on me. That because reason why we ain't talking let me tell why we ain't talking because you ain't answering being petty and so they worked that out or whatever and um that's when all of a sudden they start they brought up yandy and she was like yandy like between y'all become friends or whatever and um that's when oh i did not know this video was gonna be that long but she was like Huh? Like, what the fuck? Or whatever. So, Yandy walks up. Surprise, Ra. I ain't tell you that the girl you probably really don't like or you shading and shit is on her way. Or I invited both of y'all. Like, come on now. So, Ra was throwing shade at Yandy about not really knowing Remy. So, how she gonna help her when she don't really know her? I kind of get where she coming from, but I was like, bitch, that ain't your place. That ain't... She want her to be a part of some shit. 
hey, do your part. She gave her the part of finding her dress because the dress she did pick won't be ready for six months. So the girl you just got into it with that you wanted to fight, you thought she should have been looking for some shit regardless time I, you knew we was going to start back talking. And I'm like, see, people got friendship fucked up. I just, mm, people got friendship so one-sided. You can be petty and selfish, but I can't, like, come on. Like, bitch, you tell me you ain't going to talk to me, bitch. I don't care. Like, bitch, no. I, mm -mm, you don't, I don't roll like that. So I get where, like, come on. I was just looking at Rye, like, for real? Like, you expected this girl to keep on looking for stuff for your wedding, and now you want her to look for your dress for the wedding. This is another thing, like I said, and the wedding is a less than a month away, and then the attitude you have, you gonna put that off on somebody else? I thought that was just dumb. I thought, like, girl, you already got everything in the making in the back. You just doing this for show because this is not realistic to me. Um, but... <laughs> Yandy did shave Rob back, but she did it in the confessional. Was talking about, you worry about, I didn't come here to shave, but you worry about finding her shoes. I said, why you didn't say that? Say that to her the way she's shaving you in your face. I'm just saying that. Um, but Yandy started talking about claiming, um, I was something about claiming the wedding and uh, as hers and it, it's going to have sparkles. And they looking at her like, what the fuck? Like, you weirdo. But Remy ain't saying nothing. Remy letting her talk. And I'm sitting there like, oh, but y'all say all this shit in the confessional. Shut that shit up. But anyway, that's all that really happened on Love and Hip Hop New York Season 6, Episode 9. Next week is going to be the Gwyneth Fest. Um, Cardi B going to be in the studio rapping. Sounding better than the mother girls. I'm just saying. And then Mariah Lynn gonna tell her, you not performing that at the Gwyneth Fest? This is some shit she didn't know about. And that's supposed to, DJ Self's supposed to be your homie. Y'all supposed to have the same manager. but the, So the manager should know about Gwyneth Fest. So you got a bad manager. I'm just saying. I'm I'm just saying. Um, Or they don't believe in your talent. I'm, something, something not right. But I'm like, but you believe in Mariah Lynn talent, though. Self, like, for real? I, then BBOD... Is going to get an offer from Dev Jam, but they want to see BBOD, but BBOD is split up. Then it's going to be a big-ass fight, I think, with Yarma and the other girl. Then it's going to be a fight with the BBOD girls and Mariah Lynn, and I'm going to be ready to watch it. And, yeah. So, yeah, that was my review. Follow me on all social media sites by the ghetto view, T-H-A, not T-H-E. Make sure you're checking out all my YouTube family that's doing love and hip-hop, like, uh, Natural Pose, Sister TV, you got Ashley Miller, you got Mike B, some more Love TV, Much Love from KY, you know, Forest Rocks, Candy from Sweet Addictions, I love it that she doing this, uh, season. Um, my girl from Color Me, uh, Pink, Keisha Irvin, check out all these channels that's doing these Love and Hip Hop reviews, get into them, and yeah, oh, and shout out to my boo, James Carwell. I just felt it in my spirit to give you a shout out, boo. Love you. Make sure you guys checking out his channel. And I'll talk to y'all later. Peace out.